She's a beast. I call her comma. She eat your heart out like Jeffrey don't. Be careful. Try not to be her own. Her love is so strong. Yo, it is chilly in my freaking place. I'm about to turn this AC off. This is just no point. It's no point in having this AC on. Off for now. And my hair is still kind of damp, yo. So I want to show you guys my shopping haul. My little mini shopping haul that I got from the International African Arts Festival. Yeah, made it back home, girl. <laughs> yes, I wanted to stay longer, but I don't know. I think I was in a trance from those drums that I was listening to at the stage. I just got sucked into a trance, and I just, I don't know, I felt like, a, I felt a really good vibe, and I wanted to maintain that. So, yeah, I left, you know, I kind of just exited and left. But I had a really good time. It was just good vibes, the energy, just being around your own people it just feels really good so i really didn't want to leave but i left i left on a good note and i want to show you guys what i got from the festival now i did put myself on a budget because <laughs> i had to i'm like nah i can't i went to the atm first before i i left when I left, I had, when I left, before I left Upper East Side, I went to the ATM and I pulled out a specific amount of money, right? Because I'm like, I cannot spend, you know, I, I don't want to spend no more than like $300 because I ain't trying to go freaking broke. <laughs> yeah, I ain't trying to go broke. So let me show y'all what I got. I ain't, I ain't do too bad though. I, I only yanked out 120. I was like, okay, 120 is is decent because i know the festival yo they got so much they had so much stuff there yo like african clothes like jewelry i got i got so much jewelry i had did a whole freaking video on just my jewelry my african jewelry that i have you guys you gotta go back and watch that they had artwork they had yo just so much body butters and i'm just like honestly i have enough of like everything they had i have plenty of it here in my place so for me to go and like buy more stuff it's just like i got so much if you were to come to my place and see i have enough <laughs> yeah you could be a, a millionaire and still need a exactly y'all yes that's that i'm feeling that i'm feeling that what you're saying sharonda so i got this shirt now this is their shirt with their logo international african arts festival 50th yo 50th anniversary i had to get this shirt now it was 30 dollars but i get it you know they got to make their profit got to make their money i wonder how much they spent to rent out the um park the Commodore, uh, what, Commodore Berry Park in Brooklyn. I wonder, because that's a nice little park, yo. That was nice. And then the vendors, I'm sure they had to pay their they money or whatever. But they were founded in 1971. 2021. 50th anniversary. This is a shirt. They had different colors. They had, like, green and I think burgundy and I want to say black. But, yeah, I got green. Yeah, I like the shirt too. It's cute. I like their logo. But it's sad because had I not clicked on this woman's live IG video yesterday, I would have never known about this festival. And that's the thing about New York. New York has so many festivals, events. You just will never know. I mean, I live in Manhattan, right? So it makes sense. I don't live in Brooklyn. But still, why can't we know? Why can't people that who live in Manhattan know about what's happening in Brooklyn? You got to go there. I remember I had met the owner of this store, Moshu. And I was telling him how, like, come on, like, why don't we know about this? Like, he said how he has, like, his his fashion shows. Because, um, you know, he has his own line called Moshu. Right? His fashion line. And he hosts, um, he hosts like festivals and like 
fashion shows. I'm like, how is it that I don't know about this? I try to be hip to everything that's happening, but I'm so glad that I clicked on that video yesterday because I would have never known. It was a um, it was a store that I follow called Nicholas Brooklyn. Now I go there pretty frequently because they sell all kinds of stuff. It's a, a health food store or natural health store. They sell like body butters and they sell everything, yo. Every anything that you can think of, like in terms of the health and wellness of African people, they sell um, black sea oil. They sell the organic toothpaste and soaps and everything organic. So the owner, she went live yesterday, and um, I was on her live. And I was just like, girl, I'm so glad you went live because I would have never known. And she she was a vendor at the festival. Has she not went live, though? It's just crazy. Has she not went live? Had I not clicked on the live, number one? Because I wasn't going to click on the live because I figured, okay, well, maybe she just make another live video of her store. I already know what she sells, but I'm so glad I clicked on it. Yeah, I'm so happy. I needed to get out. So this is another shirt I got. Oh, thank you. You say you don't need to buy. You drinking? What you drinking? What you sipping on? So it says warning. In this shirt is wait, wait. Is it positive, beautiful, loving, God fearing, intelligent, sensitive, talented, hardworking, educated black woman? <laughs> I just got it just to support. Um, on the back it says, As I stand and view the world, I see where my contributions have elevated society to greatness. Who my see creations is who made this shirt. And this shirt was only $15. Oh, you got, you drinking Hennessy? Okay, then. They say Hennessy is made with grapes. You know, I did not know that. Yes, it's like a wine, basically. Hennessy is like a wine. Very strong wine. I got my freaking incense here, though. I didn't know that Hennessy was made from grapes. But it is. But yeah, the festival is still going on. It uh closes, I think, at 9 o'clock tonight. I just like the colors of it. I believe in everything in this shirt except for the God-fearing. In the sense that I don't believe we should fear God. I believe that we are God. We are God in the flesh. Nothing to fear. Yes, you love supporting the U.S.? Yes, girl, yes, yes, yes. I need to leave the U.S., to be honest. I'm like, I, need, I got a passport, and I haven't left the U.S. I need to travel and just get out of the U.S., yeah. But, yeah, look it up. I didn't know. I did not know that Hennessy was made from grapes. So, sometimes we think, like, Alcohol is poison, is bad. Everything in moderation, of course, but yeah, if you look up like the recipe and how they make Hennessy, it's actually healthy. <laughs> yes, it's made from grapes. All right, so I got these two shirts. And then, let me show you. I got this Malian. I don't know what do you call this. I was trying to like figure out the name for it, and I was telling ladies what I wanted. But I like this. This is kind of big though. I got like a large one. I don't know why I got this big ass freaking thing, y'all, because this is like way bigger than my size. Um, but I just like the. I got it because I like the design on it. See, it's like a three D house. But it's like it's pockets, but it's like a house. That's why I got it. So I'm gonna try it on. Oh, this is 
is that? Is this actually a shirt? What do you call this? I gotta get the proper name for it. But I was looking at these, right? As a lady had it on the ground. And I'm like, it's about, it's hot, yo. It's hot as hell in uh, New York. I'm like, where the fuck I'm wearing this at? But the weather in New York will surprise you because just like when it rained yesterday, it got warm. I mean, it got a little, it got a little bit cool, yo. Now, today was warm, but after the rain, it was like a bit cool. So, I was just like, all right. Or I can just, like, chill in the house and then make some videos. You miss New York shopping? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, the festival show. I'm all, I'm all for the festivals. Like, I'm here for it. I saw some of my vendors, the vendors that I be seeing on 125th Street in Harlem. I saw some of them there. And I think I saw some vendors that's part of the um, Malcolm Shabazz 116th uh, market, African market in Harlem. They were there. A lot of people were there. I'm just like, okay. I like this. I love it. I love it. And then, of course, I got some, um, I got some, like, flyers and cards digital advertisers now hiring digital advertisers as I was on my way out right from the market it was this man sitting down his, I don't know what his ethnic background was but he told me like he like he had some oil right and he rubbed it on my uh, hand and he was like, you're going to be a movie star. I'm just like, you're prophesizing over my life? Okay, you prophesying? Okay, okay, okay. So this is what also like stood out to me. The Pan-African Federal Federalist Movement. P-A-F-M. Is being built around the call for the first Pan-African Federalist Congress. It is a grassroots coalition for African unity. Its approach is a bottom-up mobilization for the political unification of the states on the African continent and those in the Caribbean islands where Africans in the blood make up the majority of the citizenry. Or citizen, yeah, citizenry. This process is also inclusive of the millions of black people in North America, Latin America, Europe, and Asia who are descendants of enslaved Africans or African who have voluntarily migrated to those areas but are minorities in their states of residence. Its goal is to involve the African masses in the discussions and decision-making process on African unity. So he was basically saying, like, they're trying to... Uh, put together like a government i'm like okay a government in the u.s or like where he said on the african continent i'm like okay then i'm your big sis i still shot for my doctor sister she know how sis work i got you unless it's a huge ticket item <laughs> how old are you sharana i think we the same age you said you my big sis I don't know. I don't know. Uh, because they are the legitimate owners of the sovereignty of the African states, we want to unite. We believe it to be self-evident that they, and only they, have the true power to authorize the African states to voluntarily surrender any portion of their sovereignty to any entity which they deem will be able to properly manage it in their best interest. He said they meet like on Zoom. I'm like, listen, I'm I'm done with Zoom meetings. <laughs> I'm so over Zoom, yo. Nah. I need to do in person. Only thing I wanna do, only events I wanna do, only meetings I wanna do has to be in person. I can't do this online stuff. As a checklist on the back. It says are you sick and tired of watching Africans being helpless when faced with natural or man-made calamities? Do you believe that being an African ought to be an asset and not a liability?
Do you believe that divided we are weak, united Africa could become one of the greatest forces for good in the world? So many attempts to like unite Africa. I think it's going to happen one day though. There's, there's no way that all these attempts to unite Africa and it never it like it never comes to fruition. It has to. So many different movements, organizations. I mean, even the African Union in Africa, that's an official government, I think, organization. It's an official entity, right? That purpose is to unite the African states or countries or whatever. So it's like, it has to happen. Has to. Do you believe that the political unification of the African states is a matter of utmost urgency for Africans on the continent and in the diaspora? Do you agree with Kwame Promo when he stated that it is clear that we must find an African solution to our problems and that this can only be in African unity. Do you think that who? Cheek onto Dio? I fucked that person they all up. My bad. Was right when he said African unity, I feel, will come from the base and develop as an undercurrent to the present political sterility and economic Stagnancy rampant on our continent. I see Harvey. He made a joke. He said, "Reading out loud. That's a whole nother reading now. Reading out loud. <laughs> oh, motherfucker, it's funny as shit, yo. Y'all should hear my mom read out loud. It's awful. You say you wait, 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 wait. What did you say? I think I missed some of your comments. Mm, 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 mm. Why did he, okay. Know, what is going on with these comments? You said you'll be 44? Uh, hold on. <clears throat> 44 in two days. You feel all of it. Help get these kids through school. You tired? <laughs> I bet. You work three jobs to make sure your sis had the right, had the money they need to make it through school. Yeah. I feel you. Three jobs though, nah. I don't feel that shit. Nah. Nah, that's like my mom would take this shit off. My mom. She a hard working woman too. She worked like two jobs. I'm like, why? Why, yo? Why? Fuck that. If we get to the point where a motherfucker gotta be like slaving and shit, working that many jobs, why not just sell some pussy? You know what I'm saying? Make it, keep that shit simple. Let me stop. Nah, I'm joking with y'all, but nah, I'm not joking though. But I'm saying though, it's just like, nah, we live in a day and age where it's like, there's so many different ways to make money. Fuck all that shit. I am not working hard, like, on somebody's job. Like, mm -mm. But it's good. I mean, my hard work, I feel like, work, like, studying, obviously, to become a psychologist. That's a lot of hard work, right? And part of that, I had my days of working for free. I did three 800-hour practicums where I did not get paid. I was in Los Angeles. Them days are over. <laughs> Your girl about to be licensed and yeah. My salary is going up. So, nah, I don't see that slaving for what? So, there was this booth I passed by, right? And it had like some magazines. And it had, like, she gave me, uh, she gave me this, right? And it was this white lady talking to me. And I had to ask her. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is a, this is a Pan-African festival. And you're white and you're trying to, I know you ain't trying to sell me shit. But that's why she was just giving me, like, free shit. Because I ain't, you know, I ain't, nah, 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 bruh. But she had, like, it was black people at her booth. But it's just like, what is you doing? So she said she from, uh, New Jersey. And she had, like, she had some magazine. I guess he's trying to keep the legacy going for somebody. I don't know who this guy was. 
y'all gotta go back and watch the video that I made. Um, I think it was the first video that I uploaded, part one. And yeah, she said she's trying to maintain the legacy of this guy. I don't know, I really wasn't listening too much to what she was saying because I'm just like, what's the problem? I said, I said, are you African? <laughs> she said, nah. She was like, no. Uh, I think she said she Irish. I'm just like, okay, like, why is you talking to me, yo? I'm saying. <laughs> Let me stop. Nah, she gave me this, um, I don't know what the hell. I just feel like white people just always try to find their way in our spaces. Like, what is you doing? Why is you here? But good thing though, it wasn't that many white people out there. I probably can count like on one hand how many white people were out there. So that's a good thing. Oh yeah, she gave me this right here, the Earth Center. I don't know. I don't know about. I don't know. Mm -mm. I don't know about that. Self determination is our right. Separation with all our might. Separation is our fight. Oh 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 wait wait I read that wrong. Okay, self-determination is our right. Separation with all our might. Reparation is our fight. Afrodescendant.org. Every Sunday, New York meetings, 2 p.m. to 4. Everybody's still on Zoom. Like, dude talking about they have Zoom meetings. Nah, bro, you need to... In person. But see, the thing about Zoom, a lot of people have been meeting on Zoom because of the pandemic, right? The pandemic is kind of passed over, right? Like, you can have meetings in person now. The government not keeping you from doing that. But it's economical to have Zoom meetings. And of course, anybody in the world can attend the Zoom meeting, right? Versus having to rent out a space to host the meeting. Like you can just log on to Zoom and that shit is free. So I get why people still having Zoom meetings, but yeah, nah. I'm so over Zoom. I'm so over Zoom. I'm so over all this telehealth. Yo. Some water. You said you talking about your kids? We don't want those struggling to eat through the medical law school. I never let you start. They gave us these fans. The winds of change come to Broadway. Yo, Broadway is going to be back open, they say, um, October or something like that. The new American play for a new Broadway. Thoughts of a colored man. Hmm. Broadway previews. Yeah, somebody told me that Broadway, like the plays and stuff, Broadway, they're going to resume, I think, they say August, August, September, October, one of those. Shake, free Shakespeare in the park. You already be having so much shit, y'all. New York getting back to normal. I'm lit. I'm lit, y'all. I'm happy. I'm happy that New York is getting back to normal. Because y'all know I'm going to be all up in the mix. All up in the mix. Yeah. What's this? Skeleton crew. Yeah. Skeleton crew to play. That's a lady from the Cosby show. Use this offer and save over 50%. Oh, yeah, that's the, um, those one I was telling me they have, uh, shows. They online. A new, a new American play for a new Broadway. I gotta check this out. Tickets start at $49 up to $119. That's not bad, yo. For Broadway play. If it's a good uh, play. Thoughts of a colored man. 
gotta do something about my uh, light setup. This look kind of interesting. If it's black, yeah, it is black our actors. Luke James, Forrest McClendon, Tristan, Mac Wiles, Dylan Burnside, Brian Terrell Clark, Keith David, and Da Vinci. As the sun rises on a single day in the pulsing heart of Brooklyn, seven black men are about to discover the extraordinary together. By Kenan Scott II, one of today's boldest new voices, thoughts of a colored man, blends spoken words, slam poetry, rhythm, and humor into a daringly universal new play. Welcome to the vibrant inner life of being black, proud, and thriving in the 21st century. I hate, like, synopsis like that. All these words, but you still don't know what the fuck the shit is about. <laughs> like, what? Okay. All right, this richly the theatrical mosaic shines brilliant light onto these men, a tight-knit brotherhood, revealing their most triumphant selves. Their vibrant and vulnerable experiences and feelings reverberate far beyond the barbershops and basketball courts of their community. They reveal the deeply human hopes, joys, sorrows, fears, and dreams of all men, all people. I might have to check that out. That looks interesting. They have on Broadway, December 2nd, Michael Jackson, the musical. That might be good, y'all. I fucks with Michael Jackson, y'all. That might be freaking good. Tickets start at $59. Now, if I'm going to go to a play, I want to sit in the front. Like, front or second row. Straight up. Yeah, they had some really nice artwork there, y'all. Like, one canvas painting was like $500. I'm just like, baby, I want that. I want that. But I'm about to come back for that, yo. That shit, bro. I don't know, y'all. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm about to relax, chill. You know what I'm saying? It's just a nice, peaceful day. One thing I noticed, I don't know if y'all noticed, like, where y'all live. But I haven't seen, like, too many, like, patriotic people. I mean, of course, I expect, like, white people to be the ones who were repping, repping the country, given that a lot of black people have kind of boycotted the 4th of July. I haven't seen too many patriotic people, like, even in my neighborhood, in Upper East Side. I'm like, I don't see people wearing the red, white, and blue, the flags. Like, I just don't. And then what about the fireworks? Like, the fireworks don't start, I guess, till tonight, huh? We'll see, but I'm like, I guess, I don't know, are, are like Americans losing their patriotism? Because I don't know. People probably over this whole country, even white people over this shit. That's how you know the country falling apart. When even white people are like, man, fuck the 4th of July. We ain't celebrating that shit. Like, nobody ain't really hype about it. You know, it's just it's kind of odd. I don't know. I mean, I guess because even like last year, the 4th of July, it, we were on lockdown, all right? So this is like the first year after the pandemic happened that people actually get to celebrate again, get back to celebrating the 4th of July, but I just don't see the celebrations. I don't know. People not dressed. I was trying to like pay attention to how people were dressed. People weren't even dressed in red, white, and blue today. I don't know. I'm just like white people. Now we know something ain't right when white people start celebrating it. They're like, nah, this is some bullshit. <laughs> I'm gonna catch y'all later. Thank you guys for tuning in. Feel free to leave your comments below. Catch you guys in the next 